Hey guys, Dave and Len here. Welcome to Wargame Chat. Today, Len's going to talk about the Spanish Civil War and all these Spanish Civil War books he's collected over the years. You've probably noticed he's got a, what is it, a camera and sickle on your shirt there. He's not a communist. This is just the only Spanish Civil War shirt he could find. I guess he really wanted one, so hey, I'll <laughs> yes. start it up, Len. <laughs> okay, the Spanish Civil War is unique. It's it's between uh, World War One and World War Two. It's like if you had better organized World War One armies shooting at each other. It's the first war of the fast tanks, mm. and also the first war where uh, aircraft had radios in them, which caused all sorts of changes in deployment. Actually, there are more radios available. Did the tanks have radios, or was it like World War II where most of the German tanks didn't have them? I think it was like the Germans had radios in the tanks from the beginning. They, they oh, had they did? Lot, yeah. Uh, one of the reasons... Um, oh, that was the Soviets without the radios. My mistake. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but their tanks were better, so... <laughs> <laughs> and um, it's... Uh, it was better uh, better led than uh, World War One. One of the books I got here is probably one of the best. It's called Modern Warfare in Spain. It's the Observations by American Military uh, Observers. I just got that in the recent year. This is one of my more recent ones. Mm. And the thing that was good about it is that they, they were just neutral and just observing from a military point of view. Everybody else is, uh, you know, blinded by their politics. Mm. So, and also, so I'm going to start with the shortest ones first. This was one of the first ones I got, Combat Over Spain. We blew for the fascists. And, and Where's he from, the guy who flew from the fascists? Uh, his home country. Spanish. Oh, okay, gotcha. Okay. Yeah, uh, foreigners who fought for Franco. He actually had a few volunteers. Uh, one advantage the uh, fascists had was they already had a international brigade called the Spanish Foreign Legion, their version of the French Foreign Legion. So they all already had an organization used to uh, taking in foreigners in DGM. And since the Foreign Legion was the first um, uh, cohesive uh, unit, they, they were professionals. They were able, despite their small size, the uh, Turn the Tide. And it's interesting, that book, too, it's written by a sociologist, so she goes into depth, like, what is the profile of a volunteer for the Franco? <laughs> you know, where are they from, and blah, blah, blah. And this was uh, by a British author who fought uh, for Franco. It was Mine Were of Trouble. Yeah. Uh, he fought with the Foreign Legion. Then uh, the Carlisleists were a group that were like pro royalty. Uh, they were welcoming to um, to foreigners. One of the problems uh, foreigners had on both sides is the Spanish were very suspicious of uh, foreigners, are very jealous. So also since this is. Um, a crossover in aviation. We have, of course, the Osprey Condor Legion. How and, is that one? Uh, it's uh, it has a lot of uh, information and facts, typical Osprey stuff. Mm. And also, this one's Air War Over Spain by a Spanish author, and that was good because it tells you a little bit about uh, at the beginning, like how the Air Force divided, who got what airplanes, and who got the new stuff, and so on mm. and so forth. Spain in our hearts is about uh, American volunteers, and actually with the Republicans. So, uh, Richard Rogues, actually, this is about uh, foreigners in the Spanish Civil War. The ir ir irony is that about half, the, most of the volunteers were uh, medical people. So half the book is about the new advances in treating uh, war wounds. <laughs> We have two anthologies of various writers. I remember Spain and Voices Against Tyranny. You notice that uh, not Voices Against Communists. <laughs> <laughs> remember, it's Republicans versus the rebels. It is the loyalists versus the uh, Franco. It is commies versus fascists. So, 
two of them out Guernica. Yeah, I, I'm not sure. Is fascist the right word? Word and uh, let me explain, qualify that, because fascism actually was a political party in Italy. So, did these guys actually refer to themselves as fascists? Yes. Did they, they uh, really? They used the uh, Italian fascists as a role model for what oh, they were okay, trying to achieve. Oh, okay, that explains it. So they had the flanges, yeah. which were the fanatical I, ones. I have to qualify that because nowadays, uh, basically, some people, if you're not part of their political point of view, they just call anyone who doesn't believe in their politics fascist. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's one of those it's, words that's it's losing a, their meaning. Yeah, it's completely lost its original meaning. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, Guernica was the noted. Uh, Air bombing attack. Germica. Yeah, by the fascists. Oh, okay, the crucible of World War II. Yeah, it was supposed to predate all the terror bombings that we'd see in World War II. And actually, what it is is that the uh, communist propaganda exaggerated how effective the raid was. And of course, Hitler was negotiating with uh, Neville Chamberlain. He had no hesitation since it's the enemy propaganda. See, we. Uh, two dozen airplanes, and uh, we destroyed the whole city. Just like we got hundreds of them. <laughs> you, you don't want a war with me, Mr. Chamberlain. <laughs> so, actually, these. Wait a minute. There's two called Guernica here. This. Yeah. Oh, okay. You confused me there. This is the one with Picasso on the cover. Yeah. Or one of his paintings. Gotcha. How Hitler's Air Force destroyed a realize Spanish this. city for Franco and practice for World War II. Yeah. <laughs> they always claim that this is like, a, they're, they're just deliberately, actually what it is, they're dropping bombs on a bridge, a strategic uh, target that was guarded by anti-aircraft guns. But they were doing it like at this time 8,000 feet, which was really high, and well, they missed a lot. Mm. I think the bridge never got hit. Typical left wing propaganda. They shall not pass. Yeah, one of the leaders, more for inspiration. It looks like a woman. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, British poet talking about his fun times in uh, Spain. Hmm. Now this one's interesting. What were his fun times? Was he like a volunteer soldier? Or... Yeah. Oh, okay, gotcha. Uh, this one contend that the real reason why the Republic lost was that their allies, the Soviet Union, stole all the gold. <laughs> and that's one of the reasons why uh, during World War II, Franco did send over a blue uh, division to help fight the Russians. To, you know, he had a legitimate cause, even though he never declared war, but they were considered volunteers. Mm. So, uh, this is a short history. The Spanish Civil War, a uh, short introduction. Yeah. Actually, this is one I should read since, I, I, I mean, I, I don't really, I know the bare basics of the Spanish Civil War, but that's yeah. about it. Uh, I, I can't talk about it uh, very much the though, problem I don't is know enough. there's a lot of left-wing uh, uh, propaganda oh so there's uh, propaganda and then there's history yeah and the thing is they not uh, you know the things you're looking for are things like leadership numbers of uh, what units fought over there and tactics because this is also war where there's no really great military leaders so men in battle is about uh, uh, one unit uh, fighting uh, in one battle. And the what unit was it? Was it a, a fascist or was it a communist? It was a communist. Oh, okay. Because uh, until uh, except for those three, that's the only thing I can find. Passionate War is another history of the entire conflict. I too many books on top, so it's kind of bent. <laughs> and this one's more like a cultural history. It. Uh, was this Franco's crypt? Yeah. Uh, one of the things that was real cute is that they, I forget what the name of the big mausoleum uh, dedicated to the Civil War, uh, Spanish Civil War. And Franco was buried there. And the thing is, over the years, uh, the uh, Spanish government is slowly becoming more left of center. So what they did is they passed a law saying only those people who died in the Civil War could be buried there. So he's in his family uh, buried. Uh, yeah, I heard about that. Yeah, actually, yeah. Yeah, you know, uh, one thing, uh, one of the reasons that was to cause this war was that the leftists were arrogant and aggressive, and that scared the more conservative 
uh, parts of Spanish society. Because at the same time, France had a left-wing government, but they didn't have these problems because they knew how to talk to the conservative side to not frighten them. Like, for instance, the military was anti-left-wing, but they'd go over and say, hey, you know, be nice to us, and, you know, Mr. And they promised the Navy more battleships, they promised the Army more tanks, and the Air Force more airplanes, you know, just be on our side, and, you know, we won't cause problem, and, you know, and we'll help you. But with the, the communists in Spain, they, you know, the burning churches, looting, uh, and all over, looting uh, the rich estates, mm. so, all right. So that's basically, this is just a casual one. There's actually more stuff out there, but. Yeah, you got quite a collection here. I, I don't even have one book about this war, so. <laughs> yeah, uh, one of the reasons why is during the summer of George Floyd and the mostly peaceful uh, protests, uh, everybody's talking about how America is going to be, have another civil war. Everybody's thinking, well, it's going to be like the blue and the gray. No, 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 no. It's going to be, uh, divided by the culture. In fact, I, I was envisioning things like um, entire, st you know, one part of a state would go to one side, another one would go to another side, or one part of a city would go to one side, and the other part of the city would go to, the so they'd be fighting uh, the, uh, each other in the streets, and uh, so, but, and that reminded me about Spain, how various regions would be divided over um, which side to support. Because mm. um, when Franco, uh, this was also the first war when uh, you had an airlift. Uh, so when he brought over his Spanish Legion, first couple months they eventually, they didn't really fight as they marched through Spain finding out who's friendly and who's not. Because there were like uh, areas in which uh, part of a regiment would be friend, uh, loyal to the government, the other part would uh, support him. And that's how I thought that if we did get into a, a civil war, it'd be divided like that. So that's my uh, lesson for today. Gotcha. All right. Thanks, Len. All right. We'll have something new for you guys next week. Have a good evening.